Starting in 1938, we are at Weiler today here in Bavaria. We're going to take you on a factory tour, starting with smaller machines, going into medium, and then large custom machines. After that, we're going to show you how they're being made. So without me talking any further, let's get inside where it is warmer, all right? Well, we made it inside where it's a little bit warmer. Warmer, As you can see, my coat is now off. And as I mentioned outside, we're going to start with the standard machines that are a bit smaller before we jump into the medium size and these massive machines. They're going to grow. We're going to sprinkle water on them, almost like a chia pet or something, as we walk through this facility. And Walter, what a beautiful facility we have. For the audience watching, this is my friend Walter. And we're going to offer a tour together for the first time here with MTD at Wyler. So Walter, let's talk about this section here when we're talking about standard machines because you guys keep growing and growing and growing since 1938. Exactly. First of all, welcome Tony. It's so nice to have you here. Welcome everybody. We really enjoy giving you a tour and showing where these famous Weiler machines are being made. Yes, thank you for that. So as we start to walk, now we know about Weiler's precision and accuracy and reliability. You know, we have done some great visits with you previously. So now we're here inside the facility talking and walking with each other. Let's look a little bit more at these smaller, we say standard machines, right? Because you do a lot of customization on your machines, but this would be considered, if we're gonna classify it as something, a more catalog product or off the shelf product, even though that's not really formally what you guys do. Exactly, but uh, as you mentioned, these are kind of the standard products. This is basically the base uh, of our wide knowledge in the industry because a lot of these machines, they do go into apprentice, into training. And very important here also is the quality and that's what have built our brand name actually as being connected to precision, to reliability. A lot of these machines, which are in Germany, more than 100,000 in apprentice shops, training shops, they are still running. Even so, we are quite a long history where we can look back to and we still have spare parts for these machines which are running 30, 40 or even 50 years. Wow, so I just want to iterate, reiterate a couple of those things. Over 100,000 machines in education and machines that are running 30 and 40 years that they still have spare parts for. Now, when you invest in Weiler and you talk with Walter, obviously you need that. If you're going to buy a quality product that's going to last that long, the support that's there is also important. And you mentioned, great segue, is that we're now right here in the showroom of the education system, which is so important from what I understand with Weiler. Would you like to talk to the audience a little bit about what the education background for Weiler is? Absolutely. Um, as already mentioned, we basically started our business uh, building machines for apprentices, for uh, education. We are very proud that we are still at the top end of products in this area and we are still further developing it. And what you see here is our newest development. So we are bringing education in machine tool business right to the next level. As you can see here, uh, highlighted with this nice green color and education 4.0 name on it. This is our latest development in regard to education. Here we have machines which are fully connected with each other fully connected with the trainer and have the possibility to access the internet, to access learning platforms. So we even developed special courses, uh, special tutorials, training plans where you can online uh, tutorials to get trained on the Weiler machines. And the feedback we have uh, from the industry is just outstanding. So they are just excited as I am myself, as you can see. Yeah, absolutely. And you're not going to have over 100,000 of them around the world in education <laughs> if they weren't excited. But let me ask you, why do you think that the Weiler products are so good for educational institutes? Is it because these students get to feel what it's like to have that type of precision firsthand and to start off their career? Do you think that has something to do with it? And what else? You name it, absolutely. I think that's the that very important thing. Uh, People, especially if they're in, in, in areas uh, like Germany or like, uh, like US, uh, Europe, where you have to have high-end uh, products 
to really compete on the world market, you have to uh, have people which are trained uh, to produce the best parts possible, the best machines possible, the best equipment possible. And you only get these people trained in the right way if they can work on machines which give you that feeling of precision, of reliability, and that's what we try to supply. And um, our customers are the best proof of that concept. We have some really major players in the industry, which for the training facilities, even in Vietnam, in Mexico, they use Weiler machines to get their people trained at the top level. I got to look at my camera guy for this one and just say, how significant is it to go, we are the standard of education when it comes to precision <laughs> to start people's careers off correctly. Are you kidding me? What a great thing to be able to say for Weiler as well. So let's turn this corner right over here, Walter. And this is like your showroom area. A lot of these will move into trade shows, I believe. And this is where you also do training for some of your customers if they need it also. Is that correct? Yes, we do training courses here. We invite our customer to get uh, the first, uh, first idea, to get the first training uh, of the Weiler concept, of the Weiler cycle control, which by the way is our own development. So we were the one which developed the concept of a cycle controlled machine. We still have our own front end, our own control there. And that's basically where we test it out, where we train with the customer. Even so, most of the machines are being installed at the customers and the people get the training right there. But additional training, uh, deeper training we can do here. Or sometimes it just makes more sense because uh, machines are at remote uh, locations and all that. And then we got the stuff trained here. And yeah, go from there all it, over the world. It makes sense to have the flexibility to do it both at the facility and here when necessary, yeah. classrooms. Um, uh, as we walk into this next area, which is going to be for the audience watching, uh, the machines are growing, right? We started yes. with the smaller ones, we sprinkled a little water on it, and now they're starting yep. to grow. So there's going to be some customization a bit more to this area, and it's going to continue customization as we continue to grow in the size. Um, but as we're walking over here, starting in 1938, the new uh, owners were 1995. This is a family-owned company. Would you like to offer the audience any other details about the company as we walk into this new area of the medium-sized machines? Absolutely. As you said, we are um, a family-owned company. In the meantime, already a group of company, so we have an extended uh, kind of work bench just a couple of hours away from here. We have another facility where we do offer basically original manufacturer uh, retrofit. So another, another way where we can make sure that sustainability, which is a very important thing for us, even shows uh, into expanding the machine lifetime, which saves resources, which saves money, which saves energy. And that is something we have all over the company. We even heat the company with excess heat from a nearby biological power plant. We have solar panels on the roof. So this is something which uh, the owners try to implement in all of their facility and all of their plants. That is incredible. Oh my gosh, I love hearing that kind of thing because we do need to take better care of the earth, if I'm Absolutely. being honest. Absolutely. Different, completely, different video completely, but I am a believer in that as well, so thank you for doing that. Now, we're standing in front of a few of these machines. There's a nice row. Would you like to go into some details, a little bit about this, as we would call the medium-sized machines and how the customers might benefit from this array? Absolutely. I mean, this size of machine is, is, is a very... Um, very well known in the industry, uh, very common machine, medium sized machine, typical flatbed lace, but with our own speciality, the Weiler uh, cycle control, which makes it a perfect tool for uh, single pieces, for repair work, for small patches. All, of course, very important reliability, quality, repeatability, so perfect tool for that. And you already can see very nicely here some of the features people just love about this machine. So you have perfect ergonomics, because imagine you're standing in front of this tool the whole day. Right. You have to put work pieces in and out, but of course you have to do a lot of measuring, because I said it's sometimes repair work, one-off, so you want to make sure your part is really to the spot or you have to do adjustments so the accessibility is perfect but still the safety 
is done uh, very good because we have double interlockings everywhere. We have safety guards in place where needed. So all these things are constantly in the minds of our engineers and permanently uh, reaccessed and developed to the next step. In talking with some of your colleagues, and you mentioned accessibility just now, right? Yeah. Talking with some of your colleagues uh, earlier, they said, you know, we have to be accessible as the parts get bigger, as they continue to grow. We can hurt our backs by reaching and reaching into the machines. We can, you know, is it, we have to make these machines easy for people to get in of and out of. And yeah, there's robots and cobots and cranes that can help us with that. But that accessibility has been important for Weiler for a long time, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Actually, even of one of the developments we did, you see that big post over there. It's a four-way bad machine. Mm -hmm. And whenever we did the first one, we had a customer who was already using this kind of machines for the product. He needed it. And he came to us for replacement of these old machines. And the main reason he came to Weiler was the accessibility is so good on the Weiler, so the ergonomics are perfect. Second, of course, the control, which is outstanding for their kind of work. And third, quality and reliability. Because the downtime, and that's what we're hearing from a lot of our customers, the downtime on the Weilers is significantly less than on any other machine they have which makes even so the price normally is, is, is higher than in comparison to other ones. But the return on investment always is better on the Weiler. Yeah. And I think that's something very important. It to definitely know. is. I mean, maybe, as you say, it's more expensive, but that's the, that's the sticker price. Absolutely. When you're talking about less downtime than anything else out there, that's money in the bank. That is, is. That's one of the most expensive things we can come across is when a machine is down, whether broken or change over time or whatever it might be, where that spindle or that lathe isn't turning, that's the money. That's exactly. where we're losing money. Yeah, because in the end, what you want to think of is the number of parts you're getting out at the end of the day. So basically, that is where your money comes from. And that's the way we approach it. So count the number of parts you're making, and that's the way the machines are designed, mm -hmm. to make the maximum of number of good parts during the day. That's Price our whole part. game. Exactly. Price per part. So when we're walking around here, and we're actually uh, heading over to the direction of the large machines, which are almost all customized. So as we segue into that part of it, let's talk about some of these customizations, right? So a lot of us out there, when we think turning center, we think turning center, but we're about to look at some machines that have also some milling on it and all yep. other applications. So the reason I'm bringing this up for the audience who's watching right now is I'm of the mindset that I mistakenly think sometimes a turning center is a turning center and I'm going to make round parts and it's going to spin and I'm going to take an insert into it and I'm going to make a cut. But there's so much more to what you guys are creating here. So I, want the, I would like for you, Walter, if you can, to convey to the audience kind of all of these different retrofits that can go into your machines so they don't dismiss something that could really help them before thinking about how it could help them. Exactly. Yeah, that's a very good point. I mean, you're absolutely right. Turning, that's what we're supposed to do on right. a lace, and that's what still 90% of the work's going to be. But if you just if I take an example, look at the shaft. If a shaft, of course, it has a lot of segments normally, you have a lot of, of just round areas, but you do have keyways. You might have a flange, you might have some, some tapping work to do, you might have some small holes, and just doing that on the lathe would just add so much more flexibility and also save so much more time, because often milling center, uh, boring center is a bottleneck. You have to set it up, you have to get it over there. And just imagine doing all that right away on the lathe. Even so, it's just a minor time-consuming area like 10%. It still saves so much time if you just reduce all that setup time. And that's where we see on a lot of the bigger machines, especially uh, the need for doing some additional. And some of the examples you're going to see here on these machines. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about that. So kind of doubling down on our previous conversation, Walter, you said we have the least amount of downtime, right? Well, not only do we have the least amount of downtime now, as you say, we're also adding other fixturing and other accessories and other retrofits to allow people to do more 
on the single machine without moving it to a second machine because that would be additional downtime, right? Your name so it. we got our camera guy looking at the machine right now. And there's, I, see, I think I see a quick change system here. Would you like to kind of briefly go over what we're looking at inside the machine? Absolutely. So this machine is equipped with some very nice additional features. What you see here, where you have your camera right pointed is a zero point clamping unit. And that clamping unit allows us to change the tool system. So instead of the common um, tool holder just for the lace operation, we can put on there uh, a grinder, we can put on there a mill, and we even can have a mill with a Y axis. And in this case, this particular machine, this is gonna have a mill with a Y axis. It's very, very impressive. So as we turn around, uh, I'm looking at a machine that's bigger than a playground that I used to play on <laughs> as a kid. We could climb in this thing and probably put some swings and some slides and all sorts of fun stuff in it. This is a beast of a machine, isn't it? It sure is. It sure is. And actually, we had, uh, we had a picture made once with one of our smaller lathes in a working area just to demonstrate how big that machine really is. And that, that size of a mach uh, machine, it allows up to a swing of two meters over bed, and we do make them up to 15 or more meters center distance. So these are really big ones, and the biggest spindle bore we are able to do here is uh, roughly about for half a meter. Wow. So even the through hole can be really big. And let's talk quickly, because as promised, we were gonna show also the audience how you, these machines are being made in the, in the production facility, right? But before we get there, these larger ones are almost always, uh, or, or almost always being shipped out very customized, right? And that's kind of the procedure. So what industries are we typically working in? Is this for everyone who's watching right now? Are we really specific in, well, I, I'm pretty sure this is gonna go into oil, right? <laughs> There's gonna be some big piping for that, but what industries do we work in as we head into the direction of the production facility? Of course, oil is a very important industry, and you've seen some of the machines with big spindle bore. But uh, as you named, there's basically no industry which would no, not need a weiler. Uh, of course, there are always special applications. I named it. It's uh, one-offs, uh, small batch production. It's R&D work. It's repair work. So that's where we basically perfectly fit in. But you're going to find that kind of work really virtually in every industry. Mm -hmm. And so we have machines being shipped into uh, aircraft industry, into mm -hmm. power industry, into medical, um, service centers, car industry, and of course, every industry does have training facilities. They have apprentices, especially in Europe. And so even in that area, we are very prominently located with our um, engine lace, with our training lace and that. That makes sense. And you have a uh, training center here for people you're trying to bring into yes. the industry as well, yes. don't you? It is very important for us. Uh, we had mentioned the reliability, the precision is being a very important part, a pedigree of the, of the, of the wireless machines. And we only can make sure that we're going to continue doing that with the best trained people. And for us, it's been a very important uh, uh, task always to have our own apprentices there. We have a lot of apprentices just being trained in-house. We have our own workshop for the apprentices in-house. We're going to have a look uh, over there in just a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. And it's a perfect testing center as well for our own machines. So we get the first-hand experience how well they are performed and how well they fit to the needs in this area. Well, I'm gonna pause here a little bit because this will give our camera guy kind of a, a 360 view and the audience a 360 view as well. We have some really nice grinding machines over here. I'm looking all around me. I'm looking at some machines that I haven't actually seen before, but learning from you, <laughs> these machines work and they yes. do what they're supposed to do and they've done it for a long time. Yes. Would you like to describe briefly for the audience watching right now kind of what we're all looking sure. at here in the production area? I think this gives you a good overview about our philosophy in generally. So you see that we are really manufacturing the parts we need in-house here. So Awila today is the only manufacturer of um, manual two-room lace which are really 100% built in Germany. And so we have high-end equipment, uh, Swiss machines for grinding, 
a state-of-the-art equipment there. We have our own possibility for bed grinding, but we still have some very um, conventional machines for some standard equipment, which is a single-off operation as we do the lead screws for the engine lace uh, in-house here as well. And there we still use this kind of single-purpose machines and they perform great the whole day. Uh, you know, I'm starting to see a, a repeat conversation with you, Walter, and it's precision, accuracy, quality, German manufacturing. I mean, you're doing everything in-house, so the people who purchase your machines or invest in your machines yeah. or invest in your people and the longevity of decades and decades of experience, this is what they're getting over and over again is that precision. Now, I know this answer, but I have to bring it up for the audience as well. Before any machine ever leaves here, you're running testing and R&D and yes. making sure that it's to absolute perfection before it ever leaves. Yes. We have a, a, a special testing protocol for every machine. It's on the one side a geometrical protocol, making sure that we exceed the in standards. And then we have electrical protocol. Each machine has to be tested, fulfilling that protocols. All this is being recorded. And we have to make sure once the machine is installed at the customer, that this is gonna be repeated again so that the customer can be sure that the machine really achieves the accuracy, the quality, which we build it here. And even before we're gonna allow the machine to leave the factory, it has to be tested in a 24 hour standardized test run to make sure it really works fine as it's supposed to be wherever it's gonna go to. It makes sense. And to close out this tour, let's take a general rock to walk to your CMM room where all the precision is because it kind of brings everything full circle, doesn't it? To yes. go from the smallest yep. to the largest to how it's made. We started at the very beginning saying quality, precision, and everything that goes into the German engineering. So it makes sense to end looking at a few of these machines and Absolutely. making sure that what we're saying is real, yeah. isn't it? It communi uh, it communi communicates in basically the key word for Weiler, precision reliability. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I think we've uh, accidentally made a really fascinating tour for everyone who's watching. And I say accidentally, but we kind of planned this out, didn't we? We kind of knew what we were doing. <laughs> sure. We did. And yes, the famous Zeiss machines we see everywhere, temperature controlled rooms. Yes. It even smells good in here. And as much as I it love sure the smell does. of a machine shop, I walk in here and this is the cleanliness of how we talk about a CMM roof should be. Yeah. Uh, actually, we even have a special room made here outside so that the parts before they come in have the right temperature so that we really have uh, the perfect measurements and that they're really fully repeatable. Uh, as you see here, with every, with every part we test, and we basically test all the key components, here you have some, some headstocks. Uh, everything is filed and is kept in-house for the lifetime of the machine. So even over many years later, we can look back and see uh, to what precision the headstock the spindle has been made. And uh, yeah, that's just the base to make sure that the, all the machines got to fulfill our own expectations and of course the expectations of the, of the customer. And here we have some other equipment like surface testing, roundness testing. Not even the, the components are being tested. Uh, before the machines can leave the company, we do test runs. So we produce standardized test parts and all these parts have to be measured. And we keep, of course, the records of this as well to make sure we reach the, the reliability, the repeatability and the surface quality on the parts that uh, yeah, that's what you expect with the Weiler. Oh, Walter, this has been one of my favorite conversations. You have done an amazing job. I'm absolutely sure the audience has enjoyed this conversation as well. I hope well. so. <laughs> Thank you for allowing us to share this facility with the world and the MTD uh, connections that we have as well. So, Walter, from the bottom of my heart and from uh, MTD as well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tony. It's been a great pleasure. And Thanks thank so you all for watching. We do appreciate it. More factory tours coming. This is Wyler and this is my friend Walter. We'll see you all again soon. Surprise, there's more. <laughs> ah, that's right. Look at this machine right here. Made in the 1800s. Can you believe that? Walter, would you like to describe what the audience, audience yeah, is looking you at see, here? This really is quite some history. Some of the genes of these machines are still uh, living in 
in our lace, in our cycle control lace, of course, you see we've gone a long way in regards to safety, in regards to engineering, but still the base is the same. We have a bat, we have a headstock, a spindle, and we have some tools. It's got to start somewhere, right? And if I'm looking at this, if I'm being fair, look at the intricacies of this product in the 1800s and none of this has been updated this is the original model the gears fascinate me how did they get this done over a hundred years ago oh my gosh it blows it's impressive. my mind yeah. mine too i always like to look at this and be reminded where it all started basically yeah right it really does do that for us and then i'm gonna try and get you on camera saying that i can have this piece behind me as well walter <laughs> what do we does this actually function this is actually function and still gives the uh, highlights uh some of our philosophy to have well trained people this is being done by our by our apprentices they did this uh, one to 2.5 uh, scale model of a fully working wild lace at the 25th anniversary of the company. And I have a lot of, of, of visitors here and they're all really, they love this kind of uh, lace and all of them, including myself, would like to have them at home. Unfortunately, we can't give it away, it's the only one. <laughs> well guys, I tried and I hope you've enjoyed this bonus feature today. We'll see you all again soon. Thank you so much for tuning in. One is the loneliest number that you'll ever see, except we are number 1,000. Surprise, we got you again. Second bonus feature. Walter, what are we looking at here? Here we're looking at an original Weiler machine being built in 1944. It was the number 1,000 machine, so this really is living history. What machine number 1000 living history 1944 I see a WAW here but I actually want to put an O in the middle and just say <laughs> wow